As you lie on your back, take a moment to inhale. Lift your feet up, take your hands behind your knees, and gently come up to a boat. So you don't want to use too much momentum here. You want to use your core strength. Come down to the floor gently, lift up again. If you'd like to try bringing your hands alongside your knees, come down to the floor and come on up. So you're doing it slowly so that you can engage your core rather than, again, using momentum. So at any time, if you'd like to bring your hands behind your knees, you're welcome to do that. Any modification that is safe is fine. Let's take five, four, three, two, and on the last one, you'll stay up. Stay up here, bring your knees together. Take your hands up and imagine you're climbing up a rope. So it's a rope climbing, core strengthening activity, reaching up with your arms, use your arms, feel this in your core as you climb higher, higher, ascending higher and higher. Let's work here for 10 more breaths. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, last two, and on one. Cross your lower legs, please bring your hands to the floor, and then come back to all fours. Tuck your toes under, lift your kneecaps up, downward facing dog. Rest through your hands and your heels, lift your sits bones. Take your feet together in the back of your space. Bend your knees, look towards your hands. Step or float your feet to your hands. Halfway lengthen, inhale. Remember you can keep your hands on your shins. Forward fold. Bend your knees, lift your arms up, chair pose. Take your hands back behind you. Keep your chest proud and open. Lift your arms up and then bring them back again. Lift your arms up, bring them back again. Reach down to the floor, forward fold. Take a hold of your weights, bend your knees as you come up. If you don't have the weights, it's fine. You can do this without the weights. Bring your arms to your chest with your knees bent. Take your arms back and start to lift gentle lifts. So the magic happens when the arms are straight and the tricep muscles are fully engaged. Keep lifting here. Don't collapse into your shoulders or allowing them to rotate forward. Keep the chest proud, collarbones wide. Gentle little lifts here. It's about one to two inches of lift. Good. Keep working here for 10. Nine. You might have a double lift, two in between every count that I do. We're on seven, six, five, last four, three, two, and on one. Bring your hands to your chest, arms overhead, upper arms alongside ears. Take the weights down about head height. So the top of the weight, the pinky edge of the weight, about head height here. You don't bring it down too much lower than that so that you can do the full extension, full muscle use here without using momentum. Keep the body quiet. 10. Last five. Four. Final three. Two. Last one. Bring the weights through your chest release them to the floor. Halfway lift, take it back to plank. You may lower onto your knees or you can do low plank, great upward dog, downward facing dog pose. Bring your knees to the floor. You can remove the weights for a moment so you have space alongside your mat if you were working with the weights or any kind of other things that you have. Bring your hands just a little bit wider than you're at. Maybe your thumb on the mat with the other four fingers off the mat because the elbows will come out to the side for this push-up variation. 
Hips are forward of the knees, chest down. Squeeze up. In this exercise, we're working our chest. The arms and the shoulders contribute to it, but the chest is the primary focus, so your chest is reaching for the floor. If you prefer, you can have your knees off the floor, and you can work like so. Your choice, you've got six more. Last five, four, three, two, and one. Woo, top of your push-up position, bring your knees down, walk your arms in, take child's pose for a moment, give your arms a break. Take about three breaths here, connect back into the earth. Feel the support that the Mother Earth holds for every one of us. Lift up on all fours again and come into Downward Facing Dog. Bring your feet together, lift your right leg up. Take your right knee to your right upper arm. Lift your right leg up and back, maybe using the inhale when you do. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, your right knee to your right elbow. Bring it over to the left. Back to the right. Over to the left. And stir up the pot. Keep moving just like that. Exciting your core here again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, and release your right leg up and back, bend your right knee, stack your right hip over your left, and a stretch. Press through your hands, <clears throat> straighten your right leg, square your right hip toward the floor, bring your right knee towards your nose. Bring your right foot between your hands at the top of your area. So this is where you can grab the weights or not. You still can participate in the movement without the weights. If you have the weights, weights in hand, bend your right knee, a slight bend in the left knee or the back knee can be useful for a tender lower back. And let's bring the weights forward and take some curls. One, two, three, four. Stay steady in your legs. So notice what is supporting you on the earth. See if you can really sink into your foundation. When we sink into our foundation, we're always able to expand and grow like a flower, like the plants on the earth. Last two, last one. Bring your hands together to your chest. Turn your left toes out, your right knee bent. Take your arms out to the side. So with a slight bend in the elbows, hands about as high as shoulders. Let's hold here, lift your right heel up. Let's do some mini little pulses, exciting your calf, your right calf muscle. Draw the flesh of your buttocks toward the floor to get the glutes to be involved in this position here. Just holding steady in the arms. That's it, keep moving here. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, draw your right heel down, right weight to right shoulder, left to left hip, bring your right arm up. Just stack your right hand over your right shoulder, and then take your right hand to your right elbow, or your right shoulder rather, straighten your right leg, hinge at your right hip, bring your right hand down to your lower right leg, take your left hand towards your right, and then lift the weight to your left ribs. Reach down, and then back up again. And this is a row, this is good for the lats, back muscles. Try to keep the upper body pretty quiet so you're focusing on your lats. Though you know you have other muscles that are contributing to the process here, your legs, super steady, stable foundation. That's it. So form is really important, not so much how many reps you do. It's more about how can you make your form precise enough to really affect the muscles that we're working. 
Please bring your left hand to your left hip, bend through your right knee, take your right hand to your right shoulder, and bring your right hand up towards the sky. Let's pull the weights to the chest, pivot on your left heel, plant the weights to the floor, bring your hands down. Take your right leg back, come in through plank, low plank, up dog, downward facing dog pose. Bring your feet together, lift your left leg up. Take your left knee to your left upper arm. Inhale your left leg up again. Exhale, left feet to left feet. Just like that, inhale up. Exhale, inhale up, exhale, inhale up, exhale. Bring your left knee to your right, back to your left. So you're kind of just like stirring a pot with your knee. And you're really just working your core muscles. Keep on working with that movement. Left to right, right to left, stirring it up. And then bring your left leg up. Bend your left knee, stack your left hip over your right. Beautiful. Take your left leg up. Bring your left knee toward your nose. Place your left foot between your hands at the top of your space where you will grab your waist. And come on up. You're gonna have your right knee slightly bent. Again, to make a little more space for your sacrum. That's it. Take your arms out. So they're a little bit away from the body, a little bit different than what we had before. And bring the weights in. So still a little bicep curl action here. Weights in. Arms are further away from the body. Shoulders and chest work a little more in this position. Good. Keep steadying your foundation. Keep steady in your feet, your legs, your hips, your breath. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the weights through to your chest, turn your right toes out, warrior B position. Lift your left heel up, take your weights to your shoulders, and then we'll lift and press and down. So you're still working with your calves, with your left heel lifted. If that feels like a little too much for you, you can leave that out. The weights go from shoulders and tap overhead so you stay narrower to work the front delts. Good, keep working here. Remember to keep your right heel down so you still have this foundation in the posterior part of your body. Flesh of buttocks towards the floor. Last three, two, and one. Take the weights back through your shoulders. Bring your right hand to your right hip. Keep your left knee bent. Cheerleader style. So your hand is just over your shoulder. And then you can straighten your left leg, hinge into your left hip, bring your left hand down, and we'll do the row on the other side. Right knee towards the left weight, and lift up. Come back down, and up. So you're just bringing the weight right to your right ribs, trying to maintain a quiet upper body, Press into your heels, feel the foundation of your legs, that which is rooting you. Just like that for six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bend your right knee, right hand, right hip, left hand, left shoulder, straight up. Pull the weights into your chest, Pivot on your right heel, plant your weights to the floor, step back into downward facing dog. Let your head release, press back into your thighs, and then bring your knees to the floor. Maybe you'll take a drink of water, if you have a drink of water. If you have one of these straps, you can use it, though it is not necessary for success here. If you do have a strap, please feel free to place the strap 
just above your knees. We'll lie on our right side first. You can take your hand just behind your ear, or if you prefer to have your arms straight, that's fine too, your choice. Straighten your legs. Make sure you're completely on your right side. So some people, if you're sensitive and you have a wood floor, you don't have a mat, you could just lay on a blanket. Spread your toes, ground through the right edge of the right foot, lift your left leg up. Bring your leg down and lift it up again. So imagine you're standing on your left foot. That's the shape of the left foot in this exercise. So the foot is flexed. Yeah, you can keep on working with this movement. We'll be here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's bend our knees. We'll work on a little clamshell. So again, the left hand can be in front of your chest. You can hold your head or ear to your arm if that's more comfortable for you. The key to this movement is not doing it with your hips. So doing it with your hips would look like that. You wanna keep your top hip over your bottom hip and use your glutes. So it's isolating the glutes. Lift your left knee up off your right. As high as you can, if you start to feel like a real pinchy feeling in your buttocks and your piriformis, you could just do like half lift. So a lot of time we give up on an exercise because we think, oh, this isn't good for me, when we can just kind of reduce the range of motion, not use any weights. There's so many ways to modify, but still really have a great effect on your body. So you can do this as fast, as slow as you want. It's more about time here, going for about 30 seconds. Remember to squeeze and not allowing the top hip to move back. We've got about five, four, three, two, and one. Bring your knees together, lift your left heel up. Take your heels together, lift your left knee up. Yeah. <laughs> Bring the knees together. Becomes a little more hard to not allow the top hip to move back when you do this exercise compared to the first one, but that's your goal. And you'll feel every time you click your heels together, what is that, Dorothy? Is that the Wizard of Oz? Yeah, click your heels together. Every time you click your heels together, that's when the magic happens. That's when you feel that real deep squeeze in the glutes. Keep working with the same movement. You might be starting to feel it now if you haven't felt it before. Don't give up again. You can like lessen the range. That would mean the knees are closer together. When you begin to take them apart, you don't have to come to the full range of your motion. Modify as you need to create wellness in your body. We've got about eight more. That's four, three, Two, last one. Bring your knees down, bring your heels down, take a moment. And then let's lift up again. Straighten your left leg. Bring your left heel in towards your glute, bring your knees together. Lift your left knee up, straighten. Pull it back, knees together. Up, straighten, pull back, knees together. Good, straighten, pull back knees together. Whew. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling this. She is at home. I was getting kind of lazy. So we can be anywhere and still use our bodies and still exercise and still maintain our health. We've got 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, 
three. Last two. Last one. Let it go. I like to, a little compression there. Just lie on the floor for a moment. Bring your hands next to your chest. Press into the floor with your feet. And lift up into a little cobra. And then coming back onto the opposite hip. So you can lie on your left hip. And again, you can do this without the strap. You can do all of this without a yoga mat. Back in the day of the cavemen, they didn't have yoga mats. This is just really quite a new phenomenon. We are so spoiled in this day and age. Okay, second side, spread your toes, press down through the left side of your left foot, lift your right leg up. Maintain the right hip over the left. Lift up, spread your toes. Good. I want you to think about the uh, technique here much more than how many you do. Can you keep your right foot flexed as well as your right hip over your left without taking your hip back? See if you can do this with your legs. This is working the abductor muscle group, the outside line of your leg, right there, all the way down. Good. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bend your knees. Lift your right leg up. Take it back down. Lift it up again. So continue on with that movement. Again, trying not to allow the top hip to fall behind the bottom hip so that the movement comes from the glutes rather than the hips. That's it. Lift, squeeze. Ooh, I'm feeling this already. Lift, squeeze. Keep going here. So little high reps here to really burn through the glutes. Last five, four, three, two, last one. Knees together, heels apart. Heels together, knees apart. This time it gets a little bit harder. Just keep on rolling with that same action. To keep the top hip over the bottom hip, the tendency is to want to bring the top hip back. And you're just attempting to keep it as quiet as possible. Good. If you smile slightly, your face can relax <laughs> and you may feel a little more relaxed doing the exercise. You, know, you could do these videos with, the, with your music, background music of your choice, if you'd like. And if you use these over and over again, you won't even need to listen to me. You'll know what to do. Last 10. This might crush me. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, last one. Knees together. Take a moment to rest. Just a moment. Doesn't last very long. Knees apart. Right leg straight. Bring your heel back towards your glute. Knees together. Okay, so just like that. Knees apart. Top leg straight. Heel back. Knees together. Heart, straighten, back, together. Your own time. So you wanna do this nice and slow, gentle movements. Slow doesn't mean easier though. Actually, I find it harder. Seems like you have to engage in each muscle 
longer with movement you're doing. Whew. So slow can win the race. I don't know that there's a race, but. 10, nine, eight, seven, six. I think slowing down is a little bit of a theme here with many people who are quarantined to slow down and focus on our health, our well-being, and our families. Best one. I don't know about you, but I tend to be rushing everywhere all the time. So if you have a red strap, please take that off. You're done with that for now. How about for today? Done with that. And let's get a little stretch here. Please lie on your back. Bend your left knee and plant your left foot on the floor. Take your right leg up and draw your right leg towards your face. Stretch through your hamstring. You can stay there for a few moments. Notice if it feels good. If it feels good, stay longer. When you are ready, take your right ankle just below your left knee on the top thigh. Lift your left foot up. You'll immediately feel a stretch in the outer right hip for most of us. Weave your right hand between your two legs and place your fingers behind your left hamstring or hold on to your left shin. Feel a deep stretch in the outer right hip. Take several breaths there. If you like staying in a pose, you could simply pause the video and stay. Bring your left foot down. Bring your right leg completely over your left. Take your knees to the left, arms out, and stretch through your right hip. If you'd like, you can close your eyes. Start to connect back to the breath, possibly in and out of the nose here. When you feel complete, Lift your right leg off your left. Keep your right knee bent with your right foot planted on the floor. Lift your left leg up. Hold anywhere on your left leg. So you can hold your ankle, your foot, even your hamstring. Bring your left leg back to stretch through your left hamstring. And when you feel complete, take your left ankle just below your right knee on the top of your right thigh. Lift your right leg up. Weave your arms through left leg and your right hand around right leg. And again, if you're particularly flexible here, you might interlace your fingers in front of your right shin. Feel the stretch in the outer left hip. Take some deep breaths here. Connect back into the earth. What is foundation? What is steady for you? And connect back into the breath. Let the inhale invite you to what you can expand and grow. And maybe bring your right foot down, left leg over right, knees to the right. Take your twist. Maybe what you expand and grow is your yoga practice, is your wellness practice. Maybe given the time, you decide that this becomes a daily kind of activity for you. So we're always looking for the opportunity within any obstacle. If we can find the opportunity within the obstacle, then we can expand and grow. Please stay in your twisted position for a moment. And when you're ready, you can Stay on your back. And take final rest. Shavasana.